Well, by now you've noticed that this is a pretty green scene. Why is it green? Well, it's green because we've attached a night vision scope to our video camera. By doing that, we've picked up some, some capabilities that we ordinarily wouldn't have. And among those capabilities is the ability to videotape the stars. Well, there's an interesting visitor to the night sky. That's the comet Hale-Bopp. Just happens to be in, uh, in the sky tonight, just as it happened to be in the sky about 4,000 years ago. I ought to point out that, uh, well, it's a pretty attractive uh, celestial event. It really isn't very good for direction finding. But what is good is another constellation called Cassiopeia, which is right over here. These are the stars in the constellation Cassiopeia. You can see them right there. Makes like a big W. Now what happens is that W kind of points across the sky. Well, now, to the North Star. There it is again. It's not as good a pointer as the pointers in the in the Big Dipper, but hey, it kind of gets you in the right part of the sky. So keep that in mind. You've got two major constellations to work with. You've got the Big Dipper and you've got Cassiopeia. This is the tip of the handle in the Big Dipper. Let's take a look at that. You can see it kind of goes up like this through these bright stars all the way up to the cup. This is the cup here. Now the tip two stars right up there will be the ones that point across the sky at the North Star. That's it right there. That little cluster of stars you see up there is the three stars in the belt of Orion. Now the center star in the belt rises due east. So if you were to look out there in a winter evening and you saw that thing coming up, you could say, ah, that's east. Unfortunately, this is a uh, winter constellation. Let me show you what I've done here. This big stick was a stick we used the shadow stick method. Now I've taken a second stick and driven it into the ground. But before I did that, I made sure that the second stick, this little one here, was in a line with the big stick and with the North Star, which is just up there. Now what I've got is a straight line between the sides of the little stick, the big stick, and the North Star. This is a celestial north line, straight between these two. Now there's another part to this trick, and this is it. After having these lined up and this stick securely in place, I ran my thumb down the little stick while I looked across the top of my thumb. What I was looking at was the top of the big stick and the North Star. I just moved it down until I looked across the top of my thumb, the top of the big stick, and I could see the North Star. That means that all three of those points, the thumb, the top of the stick, and the North Star are in a line. Once I'd done that, I carved a little mark in this smaller stick. Now I'm going to show you what to do with that mark tomorrow. This odd looking apparatus here is a little something I put together last night. Now let me explain what you're looking at. This first big stick here is my walking stick. And I pushed this in the ground and we used it with the shadow stick method to determine east and west. Last night I took a second stick and placed it in the ground a few feet away from the first stick. But before I did, I sighted along the side of the second stick to the walking stick at the North Star. So the line goes from this stick to this one to the North Star. The next thing I did is I moved my thumb down this little second stick here until I could sight across the top of my thumb, the top of the walking stick, straight at the North Star. In other words, this piece of string here, this line right here, points right at the North Star. In fact, it's still pointing at the North Star. You just can't see it because it's daylight. The second line down here is a level. Now, if I were to measure the angle between this one here pointing at the North Star and level right in there, that would be equal to our latitude. Very, very close. So if I measure this, I've got our latitude. That's one of the purposes of this. It's sort of like a primitive sextant. Another thing that this does is it allows us to accurize or to check the accuracy of our shadow stick method. Now, let me show you how this works. We've got the big stick here. This is the walking stick connected by this piece of wood right here to the base of the other stick we used to sight on the North Star. In other words, 
this line here, described by this piece of wood, indicates celestial north. And you can see it comes into the shadow stick method, which indicates east and west, um, at a slight angle. Right alongside that piece of wood, I placed another one here. You can see it. This is actually the north and south that was identified by the shadow stick method. When you look at the two, you can see that there's a difference. Celestial north, which is very close to our actual geographic north, and solar north, the one that's determined by our shadow stick method, are different. Now, this difference would be greater at different latitudes. For instance, if we were to head up into Canada, you might see an error more like this. Farther north, the error may be more like this. And you can see right away that it wouldn't take long for the shadow stick method to become a pretty useless tool unless you've got a technique like this to make sure that you can accurize it. And I want to point out too that seasons have an effect on this as well. It's a good idea to use this technique at least once each time you go into the wilderness to make sure that your shadow stick method is indicating a north that you can actually use. I'm standing on the north end of the north-south line that we determined using the celestial north technique. If I was standing on the north end of the one that uh, well, is indicated by the shadow stick method, and if I was in the Pacific Northwest, I'd be facing this direction here. See, there's quite a difference between facing over there and facing over here. And that's what this thing does, is it accurizes that. If I was up in Canada someplace, it was getting cold, and I wanted to head south, straight south, and get in those warmer climates, why, by golly, if I headed over here, I'd end up in Washington State somewhere. If I follow the celestial north-south line, I'd end up right where I want to be, sunny California. Another technique for telling directions involves your watch. All you need to do is have a watch that tells the correct local time and a little stick. And here's how you do it. Place the stick, the tip of the stick, right over the junction of the hour hand and the minute hand. And then you rotate the watch until the shadow from that stick falls across the hour hand. You can see here, right there. That's the hour hand. As soon as it's oriented in that manner, halfway between the hour hand and 12 o'clock is north. So it looks something like this. So north is right up here where my finger is, and you can see that the compass points that direction, as does the little Audubon sun compass. So these three techniques work pretty well. Now you know how to tell directions with a watch. But someday you'll be doing that and someone will come up to you and say, gosh, that's pretty neat, but uh, <laughs> how do you do with one of these? And you say, well, you know, that's not too tough because whoosh, I have one of these. Or you can even say, whoosh, I have one of these too. But let me show you how we do that. You just draw the watch face like so. I make it kind of easy this way. This is 12, 1, 2, and 3 o'clock, something like this. Now, you do the same thing that you did with a regular old watch. You simply put a stick in the center, and you rotate the watch until the shadow falls across the hour hand, which is about like this. And halfway between the hour hand and 12 o'clock is north, just like that. And you know what? Here's our compass. And look at that, they're right on. Well, we hope you enjoyed this volume of the Woods Master, and we hope you'll join us in the next volume. In the meantime, we hope to see you at Hood's Woods. Take care and see you on the trail. Come on, guys. Come on, let's go, come on.